Well, Dr. Stephanie Hare is a researcher and an expert on technology ethics. She joins me now. Thanks for coming in. So which devices are potentially hackable here? Well, the focus in today's story has been about security cameras that people might have around their home, possibly to ward off a robber or keep an eye on the dog. But it could also be baby monitors that are internet enabled. So you could check, you might get a notification on your phone if your baby starts crying at work. You want to peek in and see how everything's going. But really, the broader principle is that anything that is connected to the internet is hackable. And that's why the National Cybersecurity Center is warning people, you really need to secure not just your Wi-Fi router, for instance, or your laptop or your phone, but any smart device that you might have in your home. So that includes something like an Alexa or if you've got a smart television. Yeah. Lots of talk obviously about smart fridges and smart ovens and smart everything. Yeah, everything that's smart is in fact basically a surveillance tool that is potentially activated. So you need to just really plug up all the holes and keep it as secure as possible. And, and the idea of people's baby monitors being hacked is, is especially unnerving. What, what sort of things have been happening? Well, we've had people who have spoken to children for instance, through the device. And that can also be the same for Internet of Things. Why would they toys. do that? Well, why, do, why do criminals or nefarious actors do anything? I mean, I'm not a psychologist, but mm. people, the point is people do it and they can. And so the idea is, is that you might have created an environment thinking that you were boosting the security in your home or with your child. But in fact, what you've actually done is create a risk, right? So, if so, you want so to who can it, actually hack into it? Do they have to be near your house? For example, if you've got the baby monster on or not? No. No, so there are different ways, there are different sort of vectors, if you will, that you could use to find out if somebody has a device in their home that is not secure, okay, so that you would just do over the internet. Now, some of that could be done if you were near the property, but some of it can be done remotely, right, via the internet. So, really, the big key thing is are you changing that password? on a regular basis, are you updating the software for it? Are you using something called two-factor authentication? And you don't want to get that through your phone with a text message because you can actually hack somebody's phone. What you want to do is use something called an authenticator app. That's an app that you download on your phone. When you activate it, it gives you like a little number that you have to type in, kind of like when you do internet banking. Mm. And it's, it's only valid for a very short period of time. That's the most effective way for you to kind of minimize the risk that you can do at, at your level. It's totally different if you're running a business or a city, but if you're just trying to keep your own home devices secure, two-factor authentication, update your passwords, update your software, set it, set it to be done automatically as much as you can so you don't even have to think about it. People are going to think, oh my goodness, that sounds really complicated, yeah. but it is really important. How much of this is linked to also to 5G networks? Well, that's the thing. So 5G, which is the next generation of telecommunications technology that we're starting to build here in the UK, is going to make it where the Internet of Things, which is right now kind of a, a promise, it's going mm. to become a reality. You'll be able to put sensors on everything and make devices that are right now dumb which just means simply that they can't give us data, mm. you'll be able to make them smart. But just every time you hear the word smart, replace it with surveillance. And that will really help you to understand that you are creating both opportunity and risk. So if you're going to introduce that opportunity into your life, you are also introducing risk. Do you need that for your children's toys? Do you need that for your baby monitor? Do you need that for a camera in your home? That's the question that you have to calculate. Dr. Stephanie Hare, it is fascinating, alarming, but fascinating. Thanks very much indeed for explaining some of the complexity of all that.